guys, Jean from Canon here, sitting here with Jeremy Overton after filming a day in the life of Jeremy. Um, we've got a couple of questions that we've had asked on social, so we're just gonna get right into it. Um, so Jeremy, can you tell us what your standard kit looks like? Uh, so a kit for a surf trip, say I was going somewhere, would be um, full frame body or bodies, just 5D Mark IV for that. I've got a Mark III as well that I often take. Um, and then a 7D Mark II for action. Uh, lenses would be a 35 prime, 50 prime, the 70 to 200, 2.8, which I really like. Um, a 100 to 400 for long lens stuff. And then oh, I'd have a fisheye in there as well. Um, and of course, with my water housings, and that's where I'd be using that. So yeah. Speaking of um, water housings, um, have you got multiple for your kit? Uh, yeah, I've got two, um, but I just have one that I use primarily that mostly takes my 5G bodies and then I can jam a 7D in there as well. Yeah. Um, how long have you been doing surf photography and do you surf as well? Uh, roughly shooting surfing for about nearly 10 years now and um, yeah, I surf a lot. Yeah, yeah. really enjoy it. <laughs> nice. What lens do you kind of default to when you're shooting in the water? Uh, I really like 50mm on a crop sensor body, so on the 7D too, um, but lately I've been using the 70 to 200 in the water on either of my 5D bodies and that, I'm really enjoying that a lot, yeah. How do you remain creative and stop a creative block? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I think taking the time to just do other things, like to be honest, I did get a little over shooting surfing lately and I've just stopped and spent a lot more time going surfing and enjoying it. Um, doing other things like I build surfboards. Um, yeah, just just stopping and stepping away from it a little bit and then you can kind of look back and realize that, oh, you know, I'm actually really lucky to be doing what I do and, um, and you know, it helps me enjoy it a lot more, I think. Yeah, just doing other things, like don't focus on one thing all the time or it could get a bit stale, you know? Yeah. So understanding surfing and being a surfer yourself, do you think that makes you a better surf photographer? I do think that um, understanding surfing, uh, you know, being a surfer does help in surf photography a lot. Like, you really need to, uh, to, if you've got a certain surfer you're working with, you need to know how he surfs for a start. Uh, you need to know what the waves are going to be doing. You kind of like, got to put yourself in their position a lot and um, preempt what's going to happen like particularly in the water, like if you don't know what a wave's doing or, or know what a surfer's gonna potentially do, like you could find yourself out of position really easily. Um, so it does help a lot. You've just gotta always be thinking ahead and always be positioning yourself so that you don't miss anything, you know? Another question that's come through, uh, do you have any tips for beginners? Um, I think, Probably look at a lot of magazines, a lot of pictures, um, follow some really good surf photographers online and look at their compositions, look at what they're shooting, um, try, to, try to understand surfing a little more. Another thing you could do is like try and get in contact with another surf photographer who's really good that might be local to you and see if you can maybe get some mentoring from that person because it, it does really help like to come down to the beach and just try and shoot surfing it, it, there's a lot more involved with that you know like you need to understand surfing so that you can not only compose something but whatever maneuver they're doing like there's only one or two certain parts of what they're doing that's really going to look good it's not the before stuff or the after stuff so you know, your selection process and everything is just going to come a lot um, easier from understanding surfing. I think. Yeah. So when you're shooting a surfer um, and they're getting ready to stand up, what are you looking for when they're on the wave? Uh, I guess like, yeah, it's sort of subjective but not, like there's a lot that comes into like getting a really good surf photo, like obviously a lot of people know how to compose something nicely, thirds using foreground and background, but then the next part, like you might have that absolutely perfect, but then the next part is making sure that your surfer looks good and what they're doing in a particular mover is, is correct, you know, they're not falling off. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of, it's another tough one to explain to someone that doesn't understand surfing. Like you might have just got the shot and it's really sharp and you think that's amazing, but it, it, it still needs to, 
I don't know. It's like any sport really. It could be mountain biking, it could be football, it could be if someone's body position looks weird or something, and, and generally only surfers understand that, you know? And beautiful style always translates into a photo, but yeah, there's only a certain part of a move that's gonna look good. Um, there's not spray coming up, they're not bogging a rail. Same with like a hollow wave there in the tube or something, there can't be a falling wed bit of lip, like, yeah. Uh, th there's all sorts I'm kind of preempting in that. I guess that comes back to understanding surfing and spending like years of my life, even pre-shooting like shooting surfing, like I, I was addicted to surf films and magazines and I've just had years and years of looking at it and I guess trying to, you know, help, help me understand what actually is a good, a good surf photo. So earlier in the day, we chatted about some settings that you often use. Um, can you elaborate on what settings you kind of, or what settings your go-to settings are? Okay, so again, it, it, it's it, it, there's a variation that you can use. Like, a, not one setting is the setting that you should just go for. Um, I guess firstly, it depends on the light. Um, secondly, your camera capabilities. Probably your ISO is the number one. So. If you can push that a bit, that helps. Like, so if you start off and say, all right, I want a really nice sharp photo. Well, you want to be a thousandth of a second or above. Um, then trying to find your f-stop within that. I think like shooting long lens from the beach, like uh, five, six and above, up to eight, pretty safe. You're still going to get some blur foreground and background. Um, just because you've got this nice 2.8 lens, it doesn't mean you should go and stop down to that because otherwise you've got this really shallow depth of field and they're way out there in the water and it just becomes even shorter, like it's so easily going to come out of focus, you know. Um, but the, the reverse of that can work well for you shooting in the water, you see, like you might want to shoot something really artistic, particularly with longboarding and have a really shallow depth of field so you can play with that in the water because they're a bit closer to you. and. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's always changing, and then you know you might want to shoot slow shutter, so you can like slow right down to a thirtieth of a second. Um, then, unless you've got an ND filter or something, your uh, your f stuff's going to move right up, so that's pretty safe. You'll find an ISO that suits. Um, then there's a completely different setting again. You know, you're trying to get some motion blur and things going on. Uh, going back to the water. Um, things happen a lot faster in the water than they do from like way away in the water from on land so you definitely want to be to get a nice tack sharp photo running a pretty fast shutter speed 1250 or something like that um, you want to I like to play it pretty safe and be between f6 and f8 um, so I've got a good depth of field to play with um, yeah it's it just really changes, you know, depending on what you want to shoot, I guess. Um, so we've had a couple of questions in regards to people who want to start shooting in the water. In regards to underwater housings, what should you look for and are there different options? Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of options out there. There's quite a few different brands and um, some of them offer different levels of housing, like an entry housing or a full manual control professional housing. So, um, you know, you, you just purchasing what you can afford and you don't have to have all the bells and whistles like you don't need a full manual control housing like say for instance this morning we had the 90D which is a brand new camera we don't have a housing you know a dedicated housing for it so I just made it fit into one of my really old housings that had no no full manual control at all all we could do was adjust our top dial which gave me shutter speed so I put it onto TV onto shutter priority uh, set an ISO that was going to give me a reasonable range in the middle for an f-stop and then from there I could just adjust my shutter speed you know so to shoot like nice tack sharp photo could have up at a thousandth or twelve fiftieth of a second sweet everything's tack sharp it's going to be like f5 6 f7 f8 um, then when I wanted to get a bit artistic I could speed that right, that shutter speed right up to like 5,000 or something, and then I'll drop down to hopefully 3.5 or 2.2, and then I've got some really nice uh, shallow depth of field if someone comes past and it's just their feet really close on a longboarding shot. Um, and then I can slow the shutter speed right down to get some um, speed blur stuff in the water, 
and um, the, you know that that shutter priority settings just going to move up the uh, f stop for you and, and help you out there. It's like sort of feels like it's cheating, but it's not. You just you know it's a great safe way to shoot in the water, and you'll yield like a lot of good photos from that. So the two guys that we had out here today, um, are you able to kind of just? message a surfer and just say hey um, are you free to shoot today like is that how you work or do you guys kind of really plan out a shoot um yeah well i guess there's two there's two things that happen there within it i guess like owning a magazine and like having uh shot surfing for a long time and develop relationships with surfers all over the country that i can contact and they you know you, they're always keen to go and go and on a trip and shoot photos um Rangi was one case where we thought we were going to get amazing waves today and we'd pre-planned it and done everything, sorted boards, sorted what we were doing and we had this you know, master plan for amazing surf, woke up in the swell and <laughs> hit, so uh, we had to quickly adjust and so at 5am I text my buddy Shinji who I know is a really good longboarder and I say, you know, have you got, do you want to go and shoot sunrise? Let's um, see what we can get. And luckily, he was, for some reason, he was awake at five in the morning and he hit me back and said, yeah, let's do it. So, um, you know, and on days like this, that, that, that is what I do a lot. This is really normal for me to come down and try to, like, get some nice vibes on sunrise. It's the best time to shoot at that, you know, that rising sunrise light. Same as at the end of the day, sunset light. It's beautiful. So, um, I, you know, I do that a lot. Yeah, so we just touched before on uh, the waves kind of not playing ball with us today. So when it's a day like today, what do you kind of, what do you do to still be inspired and get some shots? And you've got people out here to shoot. Yeah, well, I mean, even though the waves are small, it doesn't mean that you can't shoot surfing. Like the light was beautiful for one thing. So just work with that. Like um, you're not going to be able to shoot like performance shortboard stuff like you know, high action. So I generally will, I'll either go and try and get something artistic, you know, like get in close with the waves. That's where I like, like to play with the 70 to 200. I mean, this morning we just had the 50 mil on the crop sensor, which kind of does it and shoot some slow shadow things, get, you know, really artistic in the shore break um, or else, you know, shoot longboarding, which, you know, logging, you can ride a wave like knee high. It doesn't really matter. So um, just make the best with what you got, I reckon. To what lengths will you go to get a shot that you've kind of envisioned or really wanted to get? Do you get out of your comfort zone and make that happen? Uh, yep. Um, I can think of one shot in particular that is, you know, went pretty well for me. Um, I actually kind of stole it from my buddy uh, Rambo Estrada. He had taken this incredible drone shot of um, Rabbit Island down there. Um, what happens is the swell comes in and refracts around the island and then comes back and meets itself from the other way and the waves cross up and make this awesome geometric pattern and I was just like man I really want to ha have a go at that I'd like to shoot it like more compressed from like a long lens or something like a 70 to 200 or 100 to 400 um, so I um, hustled around some buddies that I knew that one the guy's dad had a chopper and like you know hustled out the best deal I could get and um, I preempted it like I like sort of like rang the guy up and I was like oh look when the day comes I really want to get this photo can we um can I semi book you in and I'll, I'll almost know like three four days out if it's going to work waited and waited like a month and a half for the day to come this perfect swell came uh, so I rang him up and said yeah let's do it and um then I could tie it in with you know flying over the island as well another spot that I really like to photograph and get some shots there too and um yeah it kind of worked out perfect like i got this great shot um and again i i like um it was about talking with a friend that surfs as well and making sure that he was in the water at the same time so i rang him up and and we um yeah we tied it all together he paddled out at the right time 10 minutes before we were leaving the airport so he was in the water and i just got this great shot of him paddling and swinging for a wave and um yeah it just worked out sounds like I'm some sort of high roller but um that was just a shot that I really wanted to get and it all worked out I was so stoked yeah awesome thanks for that Jeremy thanks for your time today no worries um thanks everyone for watching we'll link Jeremy's um website below and we'll see you next time